I uh, was like, well, maybe prayer doesn't work. Maybe everything I think about prayer and about making deals and negotiating and pleading with God for help, maybe it just doesn't work that way. Maybe I'm the fool. It's either one of two things I'm going to be thinking. One, he doesn't care. Or two, he does. He has heard your prayer and he says, no, he's not going to help you. Uh, you know, he's hearing your prayer and his arms are crossed. He's just not going to respond. And like that Bowie song, Bowie's got a song, the lyrics are, the gods forgot that they made me. So I forget them too. I why am I so emotional? So I went atheist. I tried. I was like, fine. To hell with you, God. You're not going to take my calls? Done. Then, I had what they call a, a vision. You know, Indian man waits his whole life for a vision. <laughs> Where I was looking out the car window, hoping we'll, we'll see something. Am I going to have a vision today? Oh, look, is that a buffalo? I bet you that's a vision. Oh, look, there's an eagle. I must be having a vision. But a real vision is like a dream or something you see in your mind's eye. Just like a memory but you've never seen it before. But you know how you can have a memory in your mind and you can picture the thing and you can see it, but your eyes aren't seeing it. You're just seeing it in your mind. Well, I saw this really crazy thing at the depth. I get emotional when I, when I remember how sad I was. <laughs> so I'm gonna try not to remember how sad I was. <clears throat> so this is my vision. And remember, at this point, I'm straight up done with Get You Monado. So, in my vision, <laughs> you got to help me not cry through this, right? Uh, I had a vision. I was sitting next to Kichi Manadu him, himself. Our arms were touching and like a side of our legs were touching. It felt like being a little boy with your best friends in a gym, like during Fayad or recess. And you're playing basketball, but you're not really, you're just crammed together laughing and being best friends. Not only did I feel like I was with my best friend, I felt like I was his best friend. Um, we were laughing and mocking it took me a couple of days to come up with the word mocking. But, but what it was, God, who I didn't quite see his face. I just kind of knew what he looked like. And he was looking away and gesturing to the Bible, which was a little black book a long ways away. And remember, we're huge God-like people. Well, he's God and I'm God-like. I'm just like him. It's all black everywhere. But I can tell we're kind of sitting in like an auditorium or a coliseum actually. And he gestures to the Bible. And the Bible's a little tiny black book miles away that we can see. And it's got a little 
yellow star sticker on the cover, but I know it's the Bible. And it felt like we had been joking and, and teasing or just making fun of the idea of how, what people think of the Bible, how stupid the Bible is. Not that anything in the Bible isn't 100% true. It's just hilarious how people have misinterpreted or ran with the stories. Especially, and this is what God was, was making fun of, Moses and the Ten Commandments. And the idea of honoring your mother and father, the whole very premise. We were like laughing and agreeing and we've been doing this for years. How funny it is, people make such a big deal. These are the Ten Commandments given to me from God on high and written in stone. And I'm going to tell you this thing that you must remember. Number one, thou shall not lie. And you go, Oh, that's, don't lie? Oh, yeah, okay. thanks, Mo thanks, Moses. Never would have thought of that one. Oh, you're so important. It just, just you know, it, it, it's laughably insulting, this idea that Moses would have, feel like he has to tell us common sense things like don't kill people. But even honor your mother and father. It's like what? No matter what? Just in all case, what if your what if your father's Hitler? <laughs> you know. Uh honor your mother and father. Those guys have taken that. I mean, yeah, it's true. Be nice. Duh. Don't kick your cat. Honor your you know your shoes when you uh take them off. Don't just step on them, you know. These are common sense things. But all this he was, we were laughing about. I knew it already, but he knew it already. But as his best friend, we were just poking fun. And I realized that God can't, I mean, he was mocking it. He was being irreverent. The only way I could think of it is like, we, we were so irreverent. And we've always been irreverent. And that's where I get my irreverence. My humor is always super irreverent. Oh, look at me. I'll mock the Pope. Oh, look at me. I'm Mr. Fancy Pants in my robe. I got a big staff. Oh, all hail the chief. I'm big chief Pope. You know, it's easy for me to be irreverent. Well, I get that from God. Because he's the most irreverent person you could ever think of. Nobody is greater than God. God God does have limits. People say, oh, God is everything. No, he has a limit. He can't, he can't be impressed. He's not impressed with Moses. He doesn't go, oh, that Moses, what a great guy. What? He's God. Moses is... There's that scene in The Watchmen where... Mr. Manhattan or whatever, that big blue godlike superhero. He goes, the world's most smartest man is no more a threat to me than the world's smartest termite. So God cannot have reverence for anything. Nothing impresses God. Now God loves everything. He's a very loving person. When you're with God, Unless I am his best friend. He loves you so hard that you will believe that you are his best friend. That yeah, everybody loves God and he loves everybody, but you in particular are his number one best friend. You get him better than everybody. You got this special connection. and uh, Or maybe I am his best friend. I don't know. But it felt that way. Don't go away. I'm begging you to stay. Cause <laughs> I'm gonna miss your love. <laughs> Please don't go. Oh, really? Why? Because I'm gonna miss your love. <laughs>
The minute you, you walked out, out that, that door. door. But I got to go to work, honey. No, <laughs> I'm going to miss your love the minute you walk out that door. <laughs> hey, everybody. Okay. Hey. Won't you consider becoming a patron? Patron? Not, no, that's not right. Like um, patron. Yeah. I can't even say it. <laughs> Please become a patron saint. And support Buju Nana Buju, the podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. Click the links in the description to our Patreon page. And if you become a $25 a month Buju crew member, it's an exclusive club. <laughs> it's going to cost you some junia, some no. money. <laughs> no. Uh, you'll get a a cup, a coffee cup. Oh, you can wow. put your black medicine water in there. <laughs> Muckade bush kiki wabu. Muckade bush kiki. See, you're already learning Ojibwe. <laughs> Buju crew members get twenty five dollars a month, and we'll send you a uh muckade bush kiki wabu cup, <laughs> a coffee cup <laughs> with our pictures on it. And, uh, or just check out our Patreon page. You don't have to sign up. You can see some of these Lydia, some of these videos. This one's backstage of the show. There's Michael and Nana Bushu. My mouth wide open. This one's called, How's the Historical Trauma Today? <laughs> okay, let's just <laughs> check this out. <laughs> yeah, I need to get my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, good morning. Mino Giga Jabe. Today is Ojibwe phrase of the day. Mino Giga Jabe. Let's see. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> A rock star cartoonist. Well, I think you get the picture. Um, yeah, come on over to our Patreon page. I don't know what else to say. Miigwechka, Bizendawiyag. Thank you for listening, and I will see you again. Gigawabamin. Minowa. Hoa.